All right, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can create our very own slash command. So this will be the first video that we'll make in the series that's related to the whole interactions API. So interactions are not new, but they have came out about a year and a half ago or two years ago. And uh, they're pretty much a new way to develop uh, bot commands. So before the old school way that you would develop a commands would be listening to the message event and you would have to take care of checking what the command prefix was. You have to check what the command name was, all the arguments, if it did have any arguments and you have to parse them yourself. And it was just a whole bunch of work. But now with application commands, with slash commands specifically, you can actually work with these a lot more easier and they're much more uh, easier and friendly for the user that's using the app using the command itself. So I'll give you an example. Uh, Discord itself actually has default slash commands. So if you just type slash, you can see that there's a bunch of different commands that are built in. So for example, I think uh, I think kick, I'm not sure if, uh, yeah, I think this is built in. Yeah, I never saw this before, but it seems like kick is built in already. And you can see that what slash commands allow you to do is they allow you to uh, specify arguments that are required. So I cannot, even if I try to press enter, it's going to not allow me to do that. And if I try to like pass it in there, it's going to say that, uh, you know, I don't know why it's saying you don't have the appropriate permissions, but it's kicked it anyways. So not like that mattered, but you can see that there's a bunch of different, uh, commands that are built in, but what we want to do is we want to create our own, uh, slash commands. Okay. That's the whole goal of this video. So for example, if I want to do Giphy and then let's just say, I want to do Pokemon. Okay, they will just send like a random uh, Giphy or a random image from Giphy, which is using the Giphy API. Um, and yeah, like there's a bunch of different commands that you can build with slash commands. So let's go ahead and get started with a basic example of how to do this. All right, now to get started, what we're going to be doing is we're going to create our first slash command. And luckily, the Discord JS API has uh, functions that allow us to easily just register slash commands. So instead of having to manually call uh, the Discord API ourselves, the Discord JS library will take care of that for us. Well, we'll have to invoke the functions to make those API calls. Okay, so all we'll need to do is really just structure our commands, and then we just have to uh, call the uh, call one of these functions that we'll see in just a second, and it'll just take care of registering the commands for us. So one thing that I should also mention is that for now, since we're working with the slash commands, uh, what you can do is you can go to the official Discord documentation, not Discord JS, the official Discord documentation. And what you can do is you can go over to interactions, application commands, and you can read about registering command. You can read all the rules. You can read about updating and deleting command. You can read about permissions. Uh, but more specifically, assuming that you know all about that already, slash commands, you can see over here that they have some simple, uh, they have a simple request body of how like, a structure of a slash command looks like so you can see that a couple properties that are self-explanatory the name of the slash command the type uh we'll talk a little bit about these properties and what they mean in just a second but there's a description so that tells the user what this command is for uh, there's options okay and now if you want to scroll down a little bit more it'll tell you what each it should tell you what pro what each property uh, is for let me go ahead and see if i can find that for you uh, let me see. It should be somewhere here. I want to make sure you all know where to find this information first. Uh, okay. So there we go. So create guild application command. You have the name, the name of the command, and it has limitations between one to 32 characters. And then the most important thing that we'll have to talk about is the type. So one of application command type. Now, obviously, since we're using Discord JS, we don't have to worry about the numbers, like the numeric values, because Discord JS will provide us with enums that we can use to actually uh, specify what type of application command we want. But I just wanted to mention that there's three types currently. There's chat input, which is for slash commands. There are user uh, command types, which is a UI based command. And this shows up when you right click on a user or tap on a user. So if you right click the user, uh, You'll usually see stuff like buttons and interactions that you can that you can perform on the user. Same thing with a message command type. So when you right click on a message, you could do certain things. We'll explore these things later on. Okay, let's go ahead and go over to our code. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead right over here, and we'll basically follow the structure that we have in the Discord JS docs. 
you can see that right over here, what they do is they actually have a package called discord.js slash rest. And we're going to install this because this is uh, the rest API that allows you to uh, interact with the discord API specifically. It's a library that takes care of calling the discord API for you. So that way you don't have to manually use an HTTP library and do it yourself. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll install discord.js rest because we did not install this just yet. So npm install at discord.js rest. All right. So we've installed it. Great. And now what we'll do is we'll import the rest. Uh, it seems like this is a class. So we'll import that right over here. So let's do import from discord.js rest. And then we're going to import rest like that. Okay. Now what's next is we need to create an instance of rest and for the token I'm, I'm assuming that this is going to be the same uh, bot token I assume so let's go ahead and provide that so what we'll do is const rest equals new rest and then version 10 and then we'll set the token and we'll pass in uh the bot token right over here so i'm gonna actually move this all the way up here and uh there we go perfect so we set the token and let's go ahead and just run our code just to make sure that there's no issues currently so we'll run the start dev script uh yeah let's next here npm start npm run start dev Okay, seems like uh, there's no issue so far. Let me just make sure if I if I pass in an invalid token, let's see if there if it throws an error. Okay, seems like uh, no validation just yet, but we'll figure out when we try to call the API. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and call rust.put and we're going to get routes. And you can see over here in the docs that they are actually trying to register guild commands. So the reason why uh, you should, uh, you, what you should do is you should register guild commands first, and then once you're finished developing it, you can then register it as a global command. Now you can, you don't need to necessarily register global commands if you don't have any commands that you want to be global, because if you want specific commands to work only for specific guilds, then you don't have to worry about global commands at all. But if you want to develop global commands, which seems to be uh, what would make sense, because if you're developing a bot. That should work on multiple guilds, whatever guild it is that adds the bot. You should obviously have access to at least the base level commands. So what you should do in development mode is develop the bot as a guild command. Once you're done developing it as a guild command, when you're ready to quote unquote, you know, deploy it or when you're ready to release the command or update the command, uh, you should definitely register as a global command. The reason why behind this is because global commands do take, I think, at least an hour to update. And there's more limitations compared to guild commands. Guild commands are instant. So that's why it's a lot more, uh, rec it's recommended to update guild commands uh, in dev mode. And when you're ready to, you know, publish the command or like release it to the public to use, publish as a global command. So what we'll do is I'll just copy this code over here and I'll explain what exactly is going on. Actually, I won't copy this code. I want to refactor our code just a little bit. So what I'll do is let me go ahead and delete this event because we're not really using this. And I'm going to delete this message create event because we're not really going to be using that either. And let me just tidy up some things because right now our code is very messy and it's hard to kind of like see everything. But what I'll do is I'll create a function called main. Uh, whoops. Async function main. Okay, and then what I'll do is I will go ahead and call this function. And what this function will do is it will just log the bot in and it'll do a bunch of other stuff. So first we will run a try catch. Okay, I think what we'll do actually is before we call, we, before we log the bot in, we'll actually register our, our, uh, our commands first. So I'll just copy this part over here so we at least have something to log. And I'll copy this line over here. And again, I'm gonna explain what this is gonna do. So when we call rest.put, what we're really doing, a pull request is basically a an HTTP request 
uh, to the Discord API that's going to update a certain command. So in our case, what we're doing is we're actually updating all of the uh, guild commands. Okay, so routes.application guild commands, and then we pass in the client ID. So we actually need to get the client ID, and what we'll do is I'll actually just go to my developer portal. I'll go to CoffeeBot, and I'll just copy the application ID, and I'll go ahead and store that right over here. Well, I'll uh, I'll store it in our environment variable, just so that we avoid um, you know putting hard code values in our code. Okay, and we also need the guild ID. So I encourage you to have a development discord server that you can use to develop your bot and just paste it in here so let me go ahead and grab that value real quick so to get the uh, guild id just make sure you have developer tools enabled you can just go into the settings and do that but i'm going to right click and i'm going to click on copy id and i'm going to go ahead and i'll just store this inside my environment variable guild id hopefully i don't have any environment variables saved as the same name in my operating system because then that would kind of be uh that would, that would cause issues because it would read the operating system value over the local values that are stored inside this environment variable file. But uh, let's get the guild ID. So let me go up here. Comments guild ID equals process guild ID. All right, there we go. So we have our client ID and our guild ID. And now we need to define commands. So what I'll do is I'll define them inside of here for now. But uh, if you want to actually see the structure of this, it seems like the data type is not defined. Um, but I think if you actually provide invalid structure for your commands, it will throw an error. So let's just use a simple example for now. So let's go back here and let's just set up a simple command. So we'll do one command. We'll just call this a, uh, let's see, tutorial. Well, and then we'll just set the description, help tutorial command. And let's go ahead and just log the error. And we'll also just log the bot in. Okay. So let's run the code. And we're getting an error says routes not defined. That's fine because we actually need to import that up here. So you'll import that from the Discord JS library, not the Discord JS REST library. And you can actually reference a bunch of different routes. Uh, which is great. So, for example, the routes that we're referencing is application uh, guild commands. Now, if we wanted to register our commands as global, we would reference application commands. Uh, there's also other endpoints, too, uh, that are pretty self-explanatory. For example, application command permissions would make sense uh, for the permissions of the command. Uh, if you wanted to work with one single command, you would reference application guild command. And this is a function, remember. And you need to pass in the application ID, the guild ID, and the command ID. And in later videos, I'll show you how you can get the command ID. But for now, let's just go ahead and register this. Okay. And let's see what happens. So started refreshing application commands. Uh, blah, 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 there we go. All right, so let's go into our server and let's do slash. And we should see the tutorial help command. And you can see that it has a description. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can see that the description and the name of the tutorial help command is right over there. And if I want to add more commands, I can do that as well. Let's just do tutorial help two, help tutorial command two. And then now our bot is going to restart because we're using node mod. If I do slash, we should see that command. Let's see. Let me see. Did I mess up? Let's see, description. Okay, seems like they're different unique values and we didn't get an error here. So let's try it again. Tutorial help. Not sure why it's not showing up, but it should show up. Interesting. Uh, do I need to re restart? Let me manually restart. All right, so... There we go. Okay. It just maybe lagged a little bit, but it's okay. You can see that tutorial help two is now here. And if I wanted to change the name of these commands, if I want to change the description, it would work just fine. Okay, cool. Now, now that we've registered our slash command, what's next? How do we actually make it so that it actually does something? Well, what we'll do in the next episode is I'll show you how you can handle 
uh, slash commands whenever they are sent. And just to give you guys a little hint, basically what happens is we need to handle an interaction because when you uh, submit the slash command, right, that's also known as an interaction. An interaction create event is fired on the back end of the Discord gateway, and we have to listen to those events. And I'll show you how that works in the next episode because this video has been uh, pretty long. But anyways, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. I'll see you in my next episode. Peace out.